There are rules for everything. Pay your taxes, wear pants, don't drive on the sidewalk. Did you know that's frowned upon now? And if you own an electric vehicle, you need to be aware of the 80% rule. So grab your W-2, don some jeans, and stay on the asphalt. This is EV Basics. So 80%. Why is that an important number to know about if you own an electric car, crossover, or pick up truck? Everybody loves trucks. Well, there are two reasons, actually. One has to do with charging performance, and the other with battery longevity. Here's why. Most of the time, you should only charge an EV to 80%. That's because, one, charging rates slow down dramatically past the 80% mark, and two, the long-term health of your vehicle's battery pack is improved when kept to less than 100%. So what does all this mean? Well, let me explain. To the point about charging rates, a good for instance is the lovely Hyundai Ioniq 5 with the optional long-range battery. This hatchback-like crossover can DC fast charge from 10 to 80% in an incredibly quick 18 minutes, and that is an accurate figure one we verified in testing. Check out our EV Pulse charging challenge video for all the details. Just click the link above or in the description box below. But do you know how long it took to get the last 20% to totally top off that Hyundai's battery? I'll tell ya. The Ionic 5 needed an additional 32 minutes to go from 80 to 100%, almost twice as long as it took to go from 10 to 80. Now, why is that? Well, charging is not linear. I wish it were. Instead of batteries taking in energy at a constant, predictable rate, the rate actually changes based on myriad variables, though most importantly, the battery's state of charge. Simply put, the fuller the battery is, the slower it absorbs energy. It's all kind of crazy. I mean, imagine if a conventional car's gas tank took longer and longer to fill up, the closer it got to being full. It would be kind of ridiculous, but this is the reality for EVs, a legitimate downside with the current battery technology. Fortunately, there are simple ways of dealing with this problem, which is what we're here to share. Now, the best analogy I've heard for why charging slows down is that batteries are like theater seating. When you're one of the first people to enter, it's quick and easy to find a chair. You can just sit down anywhere. But as the theater fills up, it takes a lot longer to snag a spot and sit down. Here in the LIMAX Cineplex, the electrons are climbing over each other and spilling popcorn everywhere at this point. It must be the opening weekend of What's Eating Gilbert Grape. <laughs> what a mess. I'm waiting for it to come out on VHS. Skip the lines. Listen, I tried coming up with a better analogy like packing a suitcase or adding toppings to a hot dog, but the theater one is still tops. It's super important to know about the 80% rule if you're on a long distance drive in an EV, and here's why. When it's time to charge, it's often smarter to stop at 80% than get back on the road instead of waiting for the battery to completely fill up. Doing so maximizes your use of time. Here's an example of what I mean. If your EV has 300 miles of range when fully juiced up, that means it can go about 240 miles with an 80% state of charge. Now, obviously, you're going to stop and power up before hitting zero miles, but let's keep things simple and just say 240. If the zero to 80% recharge time is 40 minutes, you can hit the road in little more than half an hour. Not too bad. Now, if you want to fully replenish the battery, it could realistically take an additional 90 minutes to go from 80 to 100%. In the time it took you to gain that extra range, you could be 100 miles or more down the road and in the vicinity of another charger. That's why stopping at 80% usually makes the most sense, though that is something you have to determine. There are instances where you'll want to wait longer to hit 100%. Maybe there are huge distances between DC fast chargers and you need every bit of range you can get. It could be the dead of winter and you're worried about making it to your destination. You've got range anxiety, something we covered in another EV Basics video. Or let's say you're towing a Tesla on a car carrier and the extra weight means you need the additional kilowatt hours to get to the next Electrify America station. <laughs> nah, that seems unlikely. So unless you're in a specific scenario, DC fast charging to 80% or thereabouts makes the best use of your precious time. But there's another reason to avoid going all the way to 100. Stopping short is a good idea because it can help preserve battery life in the long run. But 
You know what else is super smart? Wireless vehicle charging by Ytricity, the sponsor of this video. Wireless charging brings a whole new level of convenience to the EV ownership experience by eliminating bulky cables and clunky connectors. Just park your vehicle and it starts absorbing energy automatically. Really, it doesn't get any simpler than that. Ytricity technology also supports bi-directional and vehicle-to-grid charging so your EV can seamlessly feed electricity into your home or the broader power network. Wireless EV charging by Ytricity is easy, elegant, and just as efficient as level 2 charging with a cable. I've seen it in person. This is a feature you are definitely going to want. So for more information on Ytricity, follow the link on screen or in the description box below. With an eye on maintaining battery health, charging to 80% makes a lot of sense. It's something you'll probably want to do. Whether it's a phone, cordless drill, or your car, batteries simply don't like to be full. Keeping them topped to the brim means over time the maximum kilowatt hours they can hold shrinks faster than it would otherwise. Always concerned about warranty costs, automakers even suggest limiting how much you charge. On Ford's F-150 Lightning website, they say, Ford recommends that you charge to 90% for everyday driving and charge to 100% when you need the full range for a trip. Charging to 90% helps prolong the life of your battery. With its iX utility vehicle, BMW has a similar advisory in the owner's manual. To optimize the service life of the high voltage battery, keep the charge level between 10 to 80% if possible by setting a charging target of 80% and blah, blah, blah. There's a bunch of other stuff there, but you get the idea. Sure enough, car companies make this easy to do, so forget having to yank the cord out at 3 a.m. when your Tesla hits 80%. Most EVs have a place in the infotainment system to set your preferred charge level and even whether you want to allow higher maximum charging when you're not at home. Of course, rules are meant to be broken, except driving on the sidewalk. I learned that one the hard way. I mean, those kids shouldn't have been outside playing. Certainly not at lunchtime. Anyway, yes, you can absolutely charge your EV to 100%, and I'm not telling you not to do that. It's just that for optimal battery life over the long haul, charging to a lower percentage is a very good idea. It's kind of like changing engine oil in an old school vehicle. You can follow the manufacturer's recommendation, but doing it more frequently is never a bad idea, especially if you plan on keeping your car or truck for years and years. It's cheap insurance, <laughs> like keeping up on the ins and outs of electric vehicle ownership with EV Basics. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and check out the rest of our playlist for more important info you should know. Next up will be an explanation of car chargers, so join us for that. And hopefully you learned a thing or two about why 80% is an important number when it comes to electric vehicles. Remember, DC fast charging slows down dramatically past that point, and for optimal longevity, it's a good idea to limit charging to 80% unless you need the extra range. As always, I thank you for your patronage, as well as Ytricity, who makes it possible to bring you this series. For EV Pulse, I'm Craig Cole, and remember, you can't drive on the sidewalks anymore. We're thinking about making a new video series about that. I'm going to call it You Can't Drive on the Sidewalks Anymore. I never knew. <laughs> I thought that was a passing lane all these years. I know. I know. And I can't, I, I can't be the only one that thought that.